Welcome soil conservation and management students from the Royal University of Agriculture. This is video lecture 14-2 for the second video lecture on GNSS and GIS. Okay, and uh, I am Dr. Jared D. Williams, a visiting professor at RUA, and I am a professor of crop and soil science at Brigham Young University, Idaho, in the United States of America. This lecture is, uh, like I said, for RUA students in the soil conservation and management class, but it could be used in many other applications. In a in a lecture 14-1, or the first lecture, we introduced you to Global Navigational Satellite Systems, or what we use in an acronym as GNSS. So the acronym GNSS. Okay, we want to talk about how they work in this one, and uh, so we're going to talk about the uh, mathematics and the, and the theory behind how global navigational satellite systems work. And then we'll also talk a little bit more about the different components or segments of AGNSS in video lecture 14-3 uh, or the third lecture. Okay, let's first jump in and talk about how GNS works. Okay, so most of us know it by maybe a different word. Oftentimes it's referred to as GPS, which is the US system. Okay. And so GPS works, as you can see, based off of this slide right here. Uh, you can see down here we have what we're calling the receiver. Okay, receiver down here. Okay, and then we have these four satellites out here in space. Okay, and so uh, pretty simple how that works. They're communicating with the receiver. You can see that right here. They're all communicating with the receiver. Okay, the rec or they're sending signal out that the receiver is well, receiving, okay? And so maybe the best way to kind of show or demonstrate how all of this works is based off of my next slide, okay, right here. This is what I call my fishing slide. I like to go fishing, so uh, fishing. Stuik Trey, and I love the Stuik Trey. I Stuik Trey in the United States all the time. And so let's, for example, say that we have a lake and you can see the border of our lake here. Here's our border of the lake as it comes along here. Okay, and our other border of the lake here. Now, I have my favorite areas to fish from, and uh, how do I find how do I find my favorite area to fish from? Well, for example, I have there in, in my lake. For this lake, there are three different places that I can put my boat into the water. So I have this point down here. I can put my boat into the water here. It's a kampong, or a, what we, you might call a port, or a dock. In, in Cambodia, we call it kampong, right? Like kampong, uh, where the, where the uh, salang comes and, and gets us. The salang goes to the kampong. Okay? And so I have a second uh, kampong, or, 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 or launch point here, and a third one here. Now, I happen to know, and I'm, this is in miles, sorry, we could... We'll scribble it out and write kilometers over top of it. We can do that. Kilometers. You know, km for kilometers. Okay, so for example, I know from from Kampong A, okay, from from this port, I know that I am 1.5 kilometers away. So this is a 1.5 kilometers, and so I can make an arch because what this is, along this arch is 1.5. Uh, kilometers. Then I know from 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 Kampong B, I am one kilometer. So I'm one kilometer. I don't know in which direction. I just know I'm one kilometer away. So I could be anywhere on what we call this arch or circle. Okay. And from port number C or Kampong C, I know I'm a half a kilometer. I'm a half a kilometer away. And so I'm going to be anywhere along this arch. Now, I know that the location where all three of those arches, my blue, my green, I'm sorry, my brown, my green, and red arch, where they all cross, is where my favorite fishing location is. And so voila, that is my favorite fishing place. So I can use that to identify. GPS uses the same exact concept. Just like I, you can see here, you're basically calculating your distance from satellites. And if you've got enough satellites, you can pinpoint your location 
by knowing your distance. This process is known as trilateration. Trilateration. Okay. Trilateration. Okay. Now, the other thing we have to also know, uh, the problem we have is the satellites, right, I can't measure this distance from the satellite. Okay. There's no, there's, I can't drive it. There's no way to know how far this is. And so in the real world, we calculate the distance from a satellite based on, on th this equation right here. Okay, if we know how, how fast something travels and for how long it travels, we can calculate the, <coughs> excuse me, we can calculate the distance. Okay? For example, if a train, right, Rotapong, if it leaves one station traveling towards another station, let me change my color here, it leaves station A, maybe this is this is Phnom Penh. Okay, so it leaves Phnom Penh. Okay, and it's going to travel, so I don't know, maybe it travels to, uh, it travels to Siem Reap. And I don't, right, it travels to Siem Reap. Maybe I should spell Siem Reap wrong. It travels to Siem Reap. Okay, now if I know that it left Phnom Penh at, let's say, uh, 11 a.m., and it arrives in Siem Reap at 2 p.m. Okay, I know it traveled for three hours, right? It traveled for three hours or 180 minutes, okay? Now, okay, so I know how long it traveled, and if I know uh, when it left, uh, when it left, and when it arrived, oh, I have that. So we know how long it traveled, change in time. And if we know the speed, let's say our, our train travels at 60 kilometers per hour, okay, I have to travel faster than that to get from Phnom Penh to Siem Reap in three hours. But anyway, okay, is 60 kilometers per hour. So I can take my time, three hours, and multiply it by my speed of 60 kilometers and get a hundred. I uh, get my distance as 100, 180 kilometers, okay? And that's how this works too, okay? What happens is the radio signal, let me change my color. So the, ra the satellites send out a radio signal, and a radio signal travels at the speed of light. So I know the speed, and I have a clock here, and I have a clock here, so I know when it leaves, I know when it arrives, and I know the speed, so I can calculate the distance. And so that's how a GPS works, is it calculates how long it takes the signal to travel from the satellite to your receiver, and it knows the speed, and so it knows the distance, and then it uses three different satellites to calculate your position. Okay. Now, believe it or not, you actually need four satellites to do that in order to get... Uh, if you have three satellites, you can get your, your X and Y location. If you have four satellites, you can get your X, Y, and Z. In other words, your latitude, your longitude, and your elevation. Okay? Now, there is a difference. We like to use these terms between tracking and lock for position. Okay? What we mean by that is satellite GPS receiver. So if my GPS receiver, that could be your phone, your smartphone. So I'll draw that here. Oops, that's an Here's my, my smartphone here, my uh, circle here, and my screen here, my smartphone. The way my smartphone works is it tracks multiple satellites. So it finds all these satellites up there, right? It gets the signal, and it tracks them, and then it chooses, it chooses from those 12 satellites, it chooses which satellites are the best for identifying your location where you're at. Okay, and then it, and, and from those 12, it selects four satellites to lock and calcula calculate your position. So it locks in on four of those and calculates your position. So the way to think about it is if the more satellites you can track, the more accurate you're going to be. Okay? So if I can track 12 satellites, then I can choose from those 12 the best four for my location. If I can only track four satellites, 
then, then I have to use all four satellites, and some of those satellites may not be in an ideal location for me. Okay? Okay. And uh, what I mean by that is if you look at the, the sky, okay, we look at the sky, we want satellites to be, uh, we, don't want, we don't want them to be too high in the sky, and we don't want them to be too low in the sky. We want them to be just between, we actually say between uh, 15 degrees above the horizon to 45 degrees above the horizon. That's perfect. Okay, that's how GPS works. It uses the satellites, it calculates the distance via a math, a trilateration, to identify or your location. Okay, and that's, that's how it works. Okay.